This is a very quick intro to Ziki. I'm going to try to cover a lot in a short period of time. The homepage is ziki.org. That's Ziki with an X as in executable. If you go to slash screencasts, you'll see many short screencasts on various topics. So what is Ziki? Ziki is being used to create this screencast right now, so you're looking at it. Ziki is like a shell terminal because you can run shell commands. You can expand and collapse them. Uh, Ziki is a note-taking tool because you can make notes using various wiki syntaxes for headings and bullet points, etc. You can develop apps using Ziki, like uh, Rails apps or Node.js apps, for example. And Ziki is like a user interface framework because you can make menu-based interfaces out of text, like this one here. Ziki is implemented in Ruby, but you can also use other languages to extend it. Ziki uses Emacs to do a lot of the heavy lifting behind the scenes, and it runs inside of Emacs. But you don't need to know Emacs to use Ziki. Ziki also uses the EL4R library to bridge Ruby and Emacs, which is written by one of the core Ruby guys. Ziki is better than a shell terminal because you can type commands anywhere, not just at the bottom, like with a shell terminal. You type a dollar sign, then the command, and then you double click to run it or type command enter to run it. Then you can double click again or command enter again to collapse. Let's say you wanted to have a H option there, you can just edit the command and double click to run again. Every time you run a command, you can optionally filter the list by typing something. Like if I type PI, it'll narrow down to those two files because they have PI in the name. You can add notes. Since everything is just text, let's say I'm going to add a note, check out this file. I can put it there, I can put it up here. And since everything is just text, I can delete this file if I don't care about it. I can delete these two things if I don't care about them. You could add another command up here if you wanted to, to look at the disk usage. You can change pretty much anything you want since everything is just text. Then if you're done and you have something that you like, you can save it to a text file and then look at it again later and double click to run the commands again later or you could send it to someone else to have them run the commands easily. You can have commands run asynchronously by using a percent. You can have iTerm run commands by using an ampersand. You can run commands on remote servers by uh, typing something like this. You can type a keyboard shortcut to see the history of commands run recently in a specific directory. And then you can type to filter down and type control enter or uh, double click to run the command again in that directory. Creating notes in Ziki is very straightforward. You just put them in text files. You use the .notes extension. Let's make a file with some notes about how to do some things in Rails. You can type the path and double click to create the file. You can make headings by typing greater than. Let's make a note about how to create a Rails app. Uh, in the temp directory, we'll run a command to do it. Rails new app name. We can double click to run it. And we can make another section about how to get uh, info about the app. We can run that inline since we know it's not gonna take too long. Then later on, we can type a keyboard shortcut to jump to the outline of our notes, type to filter down, uh, and then run the command again if we want. You can also type URLs in notes files and double click on them to open them in the browser. You can type Google searches to run in the browser. You can type code in Ruby and other languages. You can uh, type file directories and paths. You can type SQL statements and double click to run. When you use Ziki as a development environment, this is what it looks like. You've got the standard tree for navigating the files of your project on the left. On the right, you've got the file you're editing. On the top left, you've got the standard Ziki view for making any kind of notes you want. Let's make the uh, URL of the app we're developing show up up here. You can add a Rails menu in the file tree by typing at Rails, and you can double click on it to do some of the standard things you'll want to do with an app, like start it up, 
Uh, then we could double click on this to jump to it in the browser or we could double click on it up here. Let's use the generate menu to generate a new controller. Let's name it um, C snake. Uh, it'll want a default action. You can add the URL of a specific controller up here uh, to make it easier to jump to in the browser. Then you can double click to open it in the browser. If you want it to get the uh, actual HTML and just show it to you, you can type get. And if you want to narrow down to a specific line, you can type a regular expression. Done, 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 done. You know, like in JAWS. Never mind. Uh, this way you can go over to the code and keep editing it with the keyboard shortcut. You can rerun this up here to see the specific output. Dun 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 dun. That's supposed to be a water skier and a boat. You can also navigate unit tests. You can jump to the tests. You can run them, and when something fails, you can navigate to the part that failed. There are also menus for standard web development type stuff. Like you can render some HTML in the browser to test some stuff out. You can run some CSS to see how it looks. You can run JavaScript. You can uh, navigate the DOM and dynamically make changes. The coolest thing about Ziki isn't really the features it has, it's that it's easy to hack it and make your own features. In just one line of code, you can make your own keyboard shortcuts, you can define new wiki syntaxes uh, to do stuff when you double click on things, and you can make menus just by typing them. This is how you create a keyboard shortcut. It's the easiest way I could think of to do it. Uh, you just give the shortcut that's control Z and you give a block of code that you want it to run. So if I evaluate this, every time I type control Z, it will just run this code, which appends to the line. To make a wiki syntax, you just give a pattern of something that you want to match. And then when you double click on something that matches, uh, you give a block of code to run. This is uh, Ruby code, so you can do anything in there with Ruby that you want. You can use gems, etc. If I evaluate this, every time I double click on something that matches this pattern, it's going to run this code. We saw earlier there are menus like the Rails menu that you can just type and double click on and then uh, click to drill in and run some stuff. If you want to make your own menus, it's super simple. You just type the menu that doesn't exist yet and then type a shortcut to save it. Let's pretend like we're making a menu for our Sharks app. Maybe we want to start up the app. We want to go to the URL and we want to say clear the cache. Now you can type a keyboard shortcut that will save the menu so that the next time you type Sharks, uh, the items will be there. Behind the scenes, all this is doing is creating a text file called sharks.menu and putting it in the menus directory in your home directory. You can put stuff underneath the menu items to make them do things. I'll paste the URL here. Let's say you've got some code somewhere, like in a gem or in a file somewhere, or you've just evaluated the code. You can use that at to just call it and double click to evaluate it. Now you can save the menu again, and the next time you run it, it'll have your items. You can make code run when people click on the menu items themselves in a couple different ways. You can define a menu item uh, with a block that will draw the menu. You can make a class with a menu method, and it will draw the menu. You can put a dot at the beginning of a menu, which will route it to a method. So if we evaluate this, uh, double click on boats, it will uh, show these two items and then this will be routed to the method. Check out ziki.org to see some of the other cool stuff Ziki can do and some of the other tools Ziki can interface with.